Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Dr. Basili, a full-time orthopedic surgeon and national level faculty of orthopedics and a part-time YouTuber. Today we are going to discuss one of the new patterns of questions that are introduced in the AIMS PG exam, the extended matching questions. If you have not already seen my previous video where I discussed the new types of patterns that are introduced in the AIMS PG exam, I suggest you go ahead and watch that. There are many new patterns and marking schemes that have been introduced in the AIMS PG exam. Most of the students have found that the EMQ type is the most difficult to understand and grasp. For this reason, I have taken this particular example to help you understand it even better. So the first thing I want you to understand is that, that each extended matching question type will have four things. There will be a theme of the question, there will be a list of options, there will be a particular lead-in question and there will be scenarios. Now different EMQs will have different number of scenarios. Some can have one, some can have two and some can have more. So let's try to understand each of these parts of the question. The theme of the question will talk about a particular thing that they are focusing on. For example here, they're talking about classifications of fracture. Then there will be an option list which will have approximately 8 options. We are not particularly sure about 8 options but this has been given as an example in the prospectus so we are going with it. Then there will be lead in question which will tell you what they are specifically asking about. Followed by that there will be scenarios. In this particular question there are 3 scenarios and these scenarios will be clinical scenarios or clinical vignettes with appropriate images or labs or whatever they want. And at the end of each scenario, there will be a question that will be asked for which the answer should be collected from the provided option list. Now let's try an example to understand this better. Here the example says that the theme of the question is classification of fractures. And here is the option list with your 8 approximate options. And there are scenarios. Here you have 3 scenarios. Theme is classification of fractures. The option list is Garden, Young and Burgess, Powell, Essex Lopresti, Winquist and Hansen, Bardo, Frickman, Gustillo, Anderson. Now let's explore the first scenario. The first scenario says a 55 year old patient with neck of femur fracture. The surgeon wants to classify the fracture based on the angle of the fracture line. Which classification should he use? Now the question is talking about neck of femur fracture and the classifications used by the neck of femur fracture. So immediately you have to recollect what are the classifications that you use for neck of femur fracture. Right off the bat we can remember there are two, one is Gardens, the other is Powell's. Although there are many more, these are the two very commonly remembered. So in the options we have both Garden and Powell. The second hint here is the angle of the fracture line. So which of these two classifications use angle of the fracture line as a criteria to classify? Obviously, it is Powell's. So the answer for one is C. Now let's look at the second scenario. A 55 year old female with a distal end of radius fracture, which is the most appropriate classification? Young and Burgess, Essex Lopresti, Winquist, Hansen, Bardo, Frickman, Gustilo Anderson. The answer is Frickman's classification because that is the classification that you use for distal end radius fractures. The third scenario is a 15 year old boy came with a history of fall on an outstretched hand. The x-ray shows an anterior dislocation of the radial head and a mid-shaft fracture of the ulna. Which classification will appropriately describe the fracture pattern? Now there is a radial head dislocation with a fracture shaft of ulna. Which fracture are they talking about here? Yes, they are talking about Montegia fracture. Montegia fracture is a fracture dislocation combination where there is a fracture of the shaft of ulna with a radial head dislocation. Now which classification is used for Montegia fracture? We use Bardo classification. So the answer here is F. Now if you get a scenario correct, you would get a positive mark. And if you get a scenario wrong, you would get a negative mark. But here is the catch. That mark is divided by the number of scenarios. Suppose you get one correct, you get plus one third. And if you get one wrong, it is minus one third. Similarly, if you have two scenarios, you would get plus 1 by 2 and minus 1 by 2. And if you have only one scenario, there would be plus 1 and minus 1. This type of question is not actually very hard. They're trying to mix a factual question with a clinical scenario. So this is a list of factual things that you have to remember, the names of the classification. And they have given it an angle of a clinical scenario with the following vignettes. So I would assume these kind of questions would be easy and not very hard. I hope you have understood the extended multiple choice questions. 
If you have any problems understanding this type of question pattern, please write in the comment box below so that I can help you and guide you further. If you have liked this video, please share it with your friends and click the like button so that I can make more videos like this. If you have not already subscribed to the channel, consider subscribing. I will see you in the next video. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.